Hey, welcome back. Allthingsproduction.com, Fight Ren here. Um, I just recently received a request for a video on vocal comping and editing in Logic, and I thought I'd jump right on it and let you guys see how I do it. Of course, everybody kind of has their own method of um, doing this. Um, my old school way was to have a new track for each individual take and then comp it up to a new track, but I kind of like the way this uh, marquee tool works in logic and the way you can quickly swipe and select the phrases now what i'm not crazy about in this is the way that it auto cross fades and what kind of fades it uses so i'm going to show you a few things the way i like to actually then export it to a new track and how i take it from there now a lot of my editing happens afterwards in melodyne but logic is almost as capable as Melodyne, I must say. It's, I don't think it's quite there. Uh, Melodyne is still a little bit superior when it comes to the quality and the end result to me. Um, and especially having the capability in Melodyne to see multiple tracks under each other and line back on vocals up, that's really a powerful thing. But nevertheless, Logic is pretty powerful itself. And I just want to jump into this session and give you guys a little bit of a rundown of what's going on here. So what we have here um, is this um, session of a friend of mine I'm working on right now. I can't tell you too much about it, but um, you see uh, a couple of vocal tracks here. So let me close them up so you just get an idea of the look of the session period. And uh, you can see it's only one vocal track. Um, I've already half some other things comped, and this is how what it's going to look like when it's done. And I'm going to tell you what the reason for this is. I think the fine editing in the actual comp track is a little cumbersome and not very accurate. So I usually tend to um, export it and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but for now I'm going to go ahead and mute these other tracks that are already uh, ready to play except the background vocals. And then we have this track playing here. Um, so as you guys can see what basically happened was if we started take one is I did a full take, I did a full take, I did a full take. I recorded a piece, something happened, then I did another full take. So there's about good seven full takes. And with each take that I record, you kind of need to pay attention to what is good and what is not good. Work on the next take, discuss with the singer what they need to do, and then make sure that in the following takes that those particular parts are getting better and by the end you'll end up probably with a take as you guys can see on the final take seven we used a lot of that because everything is fine-tuned but a few things were still better in the first takes and maybe a little more more natural and of course as you guys know it's simply uh, swiping to select stuff right I'm gonna undo that for a second here because it was already done but it's simply when you see this tool here that is really the tool that lets you swipe and then this is selected and going to be played in our top track. So, but when we take a look at this track here, we can tell very quickly that yes, there are some crossfades, but it's kind of hard to see. Um, you know, Logic is not really uh, that great in displaying waveforms. I think Pro Tools is a lot better at displaying waveforms. So I'm not really sure if I want this type of fade here and I have no control at, at this point. So once you are done comping and you basically have the best takes I took a chance on you to see what we could do all the things that you basically end up with your best choices on one track but with little control here and what I usually like to do is I like to export active comp to new track and when you do that it creates a new track going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and hide this and you end up with this. Now you have the control to really go in and fine-tune your transitions and one thing you really want to look out for is um, and this probably would help if we just make these a little bigger here. Um, let me see. Right. Um, that you don't edit over the breath. I think that can really cause some very audible edits and you want to be very accurate with your edits. So this is where the fine tuning comes in. Now I usually leave this in crossfade. That means how much I overlap is how much crossfade I get. Now if you don't like this, some people like to start with no overlap. And what happens is when you change that function, you basically, as soon as you pull it over, 
well not if there's already in an edit there but if you pull it over you see now there is uh, still creating an overlap because this in our region edits here has already an exponential fade out right so exponential is equal power equal power is really not the and this is another thing right so um, in um, most fades you will really want equal gain not equal power unless it's a very specific fade in the middle of a word like something like this I would prefer an equal power fade here I would prefer an equal gain fade I want it to drop to zero and come back down whereby in this it's keeping both levels the, the same and yet there is no volume drop on e equal uh, power so an equal gain if I want to change this I need to go to regular crossfade and I can always change by pulling up and down the length of my fade here and of course unless it's a very specific reason your fades don't need to be very long but if I look at this here I want equal power I might want this a little longer and I can get away with this fade if I All listen to it right I... and it works fine and um, so I end up with this track and when I'm done with this track and everything is crossfaded and I looked at every edit and this is time consuming I understand guys everybody wants to rush through this but when you do music production a lot of steps are very time consuming because we want to make sure that later on there's no clicks pops um, and we also don't have uh, um, any other issues with no crossfades and other things so once this is done then you can go ahead duplicate that track and create your final comp now before I do this if I stay in logic I would probably do some clip gaining now um, as you guys can see here if we look at this there are some individual sections here that might look a little lower than others and yes you have you have clip gain in Pro Tools just like you have in logic here Pro Tools has an actual clip gain line where we can pull up and down within a clip here it's completely single clip based so if we wanted to change the volume for this little piece here we would actually have to separate it right and that's something you know I don't know if you really want to get into that but you can then go up and you can actually bring up the clip um, and there shouldn't be any click problems because logic automatically edits to zero crossings um, you can take entire sections here change the clip of course now we have a star because I already gained the one but it will be exponential and it will work and you can therefore before you join this audio together end up with a track that has a much more uh, consistent vocal level throughout um, which can be actually pretty helpful so that's just the comping of the lead vocal which is actually a very fast thing now if you look at my background vocals here they're also very cleaned up and the reason that some of them are actually muted is because they're the same sections and it's just a reminder to me hey I copied it over when we were recording so she can hear it but there's no need for me to edit this over once I have edited here, I can just replace it with the edited versions. Now let's let's talk about uh, actually pitching this. So if I would go in and um, I would transfer this to um, Melodyne, I would simply select these tracks uh, that I want to export by holding Command. Right, I'm just going to show you a few, and I would go in and I would five tracks as audio files, and I would do that into the bounce folder and let's just pause for a second so I can pull that folder up alright I'm back and you guys, as you guys can see it actually tells us and this is a nice new function in here where it starts which is really cool bar 1 to bar 90 within the file name um, not important in this case but if you would bounce something starting at bar 50 and then import it into another session it's a pretty nice little feature to import things right to the correct bar with spot mode maybe if you go into Pro Tools then you can spot it right to 50 um, so everything is here and then when I would import that including a bounce of the session without the vocals uh, to Melodyne and then edit it there but let's stay in logic here let's just see how this works so